Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. It was just days ago we saluted the many proud and brave sailors who serve our country, marking the 100th anniversary of the Canadian Navy. Tonight, however, it looks like the birthday party is over and the Navy's near future appears uncertain. The federal government has announced major plans to cut the number of ships available for service, including as many as three ships based at CFB Esquimalt. Other Navy ships will lose key weapon systems, navigation and communication systems. The Navy says the shortage of funding is to blame, and critics say Ottawa is abandoning our sailors. A News reporter Andrew Johnson has details. I'm pretty proud of this baby. As retired Rear Admiral Ken Summers admires the homecoming statue he helped unveil only a week and a half ago for the Navy's 100th anniversary, the cutbacks he ponders today aren't much of a birthday present. I don't think there's a good time for it to come out at all. You know, it could have been two months before or two months later. Uh, but uh, clearly, it's uh, this is the time when, when push comes to shove and, and these hard decisions are made. The Navy has announced it will reduce its fleet of maritime coastal defense vessels from 12 to 6. Three vessels will be affected at CFB Esquimalt, HMCS Vancouver, which will be used in a more limited role. Combat systems on HMCS Ottawa will be cut to enable safe to navigate sensors and communications only, and HMCS Algonquin will operate at a reduced state of readiness. Summers says the cuts are a calculated risk. If something did appear, like a Gulf War again, where you had to send significant uh, combat capable ships, it would really be a, a test to make sure that you could send ships that were fully capable. The commander of the Navy, Vice Admiral Dean McFadden, says he's had to make difficult choices to deal with funding issues. He wants to focus on the Navy's top priorities, the three Victoria-class submarines and the modernization of the Halifax-class frigates. Two of those vessels, HMCS Winnipeg and HMCS Calgary, are based in Esquimalt and have been conducting operations against pirates off the coast of Somalia. But it is Canada's presence in Afghanistan that military analysts say is eating up the most money from Ottawa, where Esquimalt Juan de Fuca MP Keith Martin went on the attack today. Speaker, while we, we celebrate the Navy's 100th anniversary, this government is gutting our Navy. According to Admiral McFadden, what's happening is combat systems are going to be cut, anti-submarine capabilities cut, and worst of all, the key weapon systems to protect our sailors are going to be cut. And the defense minister fired right back. We're investing in the Navy, Mr. Speaker. We're investing in the Canadian forces in unprecedented numbers. $40 billion, Mr. Speaker, for shipbuilding in the next 20 years. The men and women of the Canadian forces and the Navy will get our support, unlike the time when he was in government. Ken Summers calls the situation short-term pain for long-term gain, noting the government's commitment to build 15 new ships over the next 20 years. Those require uh, a long time to, to plan and to actually build, normally about 10 years for a very complex modern warship. So you need to start uh, preparing now for the future. And now some would say we are rolling the dice with a depleted fleet. Andrew Johnson joins us now with more on the story. Andrew, what does the federal government have to say about the funding issues and, and the opposition claim that they're not doing enough for the Navy? Well, Hudson Defense Minister Peter McKay points out the Navy is receiving a $200 million funding increase this year and that in its 100th year, the Canadian Navy will have more money than it's ever had in its history. Keith Martin, on the other hand, suggests that with our troops scheduled to withdraw from Afghanistan next year, there should be more money made available to maintain our naval fleet. All right. Andrew Johnson reporting. Andrew, thanks. You're welcome.